Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service here at St. John's Anglican Church in Bowman. We are delighted that you are here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. from your own kin? 
Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up with the foundations of many generations. You shall be called repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks be to God. Psalm 103. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are made but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like the flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone and his place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, speak in each of our hearts. Amen. Maybe you've seen an example of this. A kid is doing something wrong, gets scolded for it, and immediately points the finger to accuse some other kid of doing something wrong. It is an impulse that exists in us from a very young age. Since we don't like the discomfort of dealing with or even looking at what's wrong in our own life, we have almost a reflex to look instead to what's wrong with other people. This has two effects. One is that it changes the subject to another person's behavior, which means that nobody, including me, is looking at what's wrong in my life. The second is that by looking at what's wrong in someone else, I get the adrenaline burst of a sense of superiority over another person. in our methods of doing this kind of projection so that we can more effectively hide this dynamic from others and even from ourselves. We can talk at length about our ideals that include equality and unity and lots of other virtues that are similar to them. And it is a lovely thing to aspire to those virtues and ideals. And yet, the desire to feel superior to someone else is as persistent as human sin itself. Not only that, the desire to hide our desire for superiority from everyone's awareness, including our own awareness, 
is as persistent as human sin itself. The desire to feel superior to someone is the primary human sin, the sin of pride. It is the opposite of healthy self-esteem because the desire for that sense of superiority comes from not being at peace with ourselves. There are movies and TV shows that are designed to make us feel superior to the people that we watch. So even we use this sense of superiority to entertain ourselves. Well, my life might be a mess, but at least I'm better than them. Even in a crowd of strangers, we find critical thoughts popping up about the way someone else is dressed, or their weight, or their piercings, or the way they speak, or move, or act. And the more we get to know people, the more we notice things in them to criticize or get mad at. This tendency turns our relationships into endless superiority competitions and makes us see our neighbors as our adversaries in those competitions. Over the long run, this tendency has the effect of making us miserable, and holding us in that misery. It is usually what is at the root of our holding on to anger at the sins of someone else. The more we keep reminding ourselves how bad someone else is, the more righteous we feel by comparison. And yet, the stress hormones of anger and outrage constantly flowing through our bloodstream are not good for our emotional health, our physical health, or our spiritual health. That is why I am so often brought up short by Jesus' teaching that when I want to take the speck out of my neighbor's eye, it is better to take the law out of my own. Then, Jesus says, I will be able to see more clearly to take the speck out of my neighbor's eye. The sins that bother me most in my neighbor are the sins that I have festering in my own soul and am in denial of. Projecting my anger towards someone else only intensifies my sense of denial and intensifies the festering of my own sin. What I really need is to open my festering sin to the care of the divine physician who will clean it out. That part often stings for a while. And yet, it is an integral part of the process of healing and recovery. And I still feel the impulse to say, yeah, yeah, I know all of that, but my neighbor's sin is really, really egregious, and my sin is really, really minor. Then I remember the teaching of Jesus, who points out to us, that the sins we can see from the outside are not the only sins that exist. Jesus can see the sins we commit in our hearts. So Jesus teaches us, You've heard it said, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with the brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. And Jesus teaches us, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks
also the woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. At first, this may sound harsh, but the more I look at it, the more I see that it's actually a welcome escape from the relentless ways in which we want to condemn others to boost our own sense of superiority. It's as if Jesus says, give it up, you've all got sins. It's the human condition. You don't have to keep arguing all the time about who's better and who's worse. And the fact that you're even having these arguments is in itself the sin of arrogant pride. One of the things I love about Ash Wednesday is that it gives us an opportunity to see sin not as the basis for superiority competitions, but as the thing we all have in common. Ash Wednesday gives us a chance to quit spending our time condemning and judging for a minute, so that maybe we can discover the humility to admit that we need God's grace and forgiveness just like the rest of me. And to discover that God who loves us unconditionally has been ready all along to grant us that grace and forgiveness. Dear friends in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal Mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of actions, an ancient sign, speaking of the fragility, speaking of the frailty and uncertainty of human life, and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy life by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Let us kneel before our Creator and Redeemer.
Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is forever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O God of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. 
for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, from the dust of the earth you have created us. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all good